action. Uh, thank you very much and welcome to everyone at our press conference for PIRA 2020. Um, just let me remind you the program of this conference. So we will be um, during 30 minutes presenting GUFA, our nonprofit organization, some contextual elements about agricultural robotics industry, and of course, this fifth edition of PIRA. Then uh, you will listen to um, our partner's three minute pitches, NIO Technologies and Vata Ag. At the end of the conference, we will answer all your questions. So please feel free during all the conference to ask your question in the QNR in the bottom of your screen, uh, the QNR section. And then at the end, uh, our colleague Emma will select the question and we will try to answer all of them. So first of all, let me introduce you all uh, the members of our team. Um, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Mayelen Kazanav. I'm the co-director of uh, GoFAR and I'm in charge of partnership development and the logistic organization of FIRA. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Julie Teresh. I'm treasurer uh, of the GoFAR and I'm also investment director at Capagro, a French VC who supports NIO technology for five years now. Hello everybody, I am uh, Roland Lenin, I am a researcher in INRAE, which is a French uh, institute for food, agriculture and environment. And uh, I am this president of GOFAR, the Gate for Scientific Contents. And I am Gwendolyn Legrand, co-director of GOFAR in, uh, in charge of communication. So let me share my screen and we will start right now. So first of all, uh, please, Julie, present our nonprofit organization, GoFAR. Yeah, so some, um, some feedback on the GoFAR. So the GoFAR is a global organization for agricultural robotics. Uh, it's been launched uh, a year ago. Um, this organization uh, promotes the agricultural robotics industry. Uh, at the beginning of this uh, association, uh, it was NIO who decided uh, in 2016 to create the FIRA, the Forum International Robotic Agriculture. Agricole. Um, so for four years, NIO supports the event, for three years, sorry, NIO supports the event all along. And it became clear that uh, NIO could no longer support uh, this alone. So that's why the association GoFAR was launched. Uh, its founding member are uh, NIO Technology, uh, which produces autonomous robots for easier farming. AXEMA, which is the French syndicate of agricultural equipment manufacturers. Rolorena, uh, who are representing Robagri, GoFAR sister association, which is aimed to promote uh, and develop technology in the sectors. And um, me, representing Capagro, a French VC who supports uh, NIO. And um, in terms of teams, uh, Mayaden and Gwendolyn are the operational team who do a remarkable job to, without uh, whom the GoFAR could not carry out all these actions. So as mentioned, uh, the, the, the goal uh, in the mission of the GoFAR uh, is really to promote the agricultural robotic uh, through diverse uh, actions and tools. Um, so concretely, uh, the GoFAR in action, it's uh, the FIRA uh, since uh, 2016. It's also a web media uh, dedicated to, as to the agricultural robotics industry, where you can find um, articles and a lot of journalists uh, and experts uh, speaking of this industry. Uh, and it's also partnership with other agricultural events uh, like CIMA, uh, Agromec, or even AgriWeek Tokyo, so really international. Okay, thank you very much, Julie. Uh, so now, please, Roland, present us more about the contextual elements about agricultural robotics industry, some main issues and key figures. Uh, yes, thank you. 
Uh, so um, why uh, do we are organizing uh, an international forum about uh, agricultural robotics? Uh, in fact, agriculture is, uh, has to face uh, many, many challenges. Uh, as uh, we have a growing population and we have to uh, ensure fooding for these populations. But in the meanwhile, we have also to reduce the environmental impact of uh, human activities. And in order to do that, we have to find uh, new methods of production. We have to find new ways in order to produce uh, at least at the same level and uh, probably more uh, without uh, damaging the environment, without uh, <coughs> um, um, having some risk uh, on people, injury people, uh, reduce penibility. And we have also to do that, uh, make um, uh, the agricultural work attractive since uh, we have a lack of uh, manpower in this area. The fact is that we have some new methods of production, some bioprecision agriculture, agroecology, uh, urban agriculture, but all these new uh, methodologies, new approach to produce food uh, need to be more and more accurate and to have a lot of frequency um, uh, of work in the field. So we have to go in the field uh, more often. So uh, robotics and for this kind of uh, problems may arise as a solutions which permits to, uh, to um, uh, enhance, to facilitate uh, the, the ecological transition of agriculture. So we have several ways to investigate robotics for agriculture. The first way is probably <laughs> the automations of, um, of uh, work that uh, are done manually today. So we have a first kind of uh, robots, uh, which appears as, um, as uh, automations of existing machines or designing uh, autonomous tractors, which are able to do, uh, <coughs> to drive uh, autonomously. So uh, using the same, making the same job as we are doing uh, now manually. Uh, another benefit from uh, robotics may be in the automation of uh, implements that are onboarded on uh, tractors. <coughs> but uh, in this uh, kind of uh, solutions, uh, we are still uh, investigating uh, the same paradigms that we are using for producing food and uh, for agriculture. So we have uh, other kind of robots which are uh, still uh, already marketed. Uh, with, uh, we will see the figures uh, after. <coughs> and uh, these uh, robots are truly robots in the sense that uh, you have no body uh, which are onboarded and they are not uh, controlled manually. But you see that uh, the size is often, the size and the weight are often uh, less, uh, allowing to reduce uh, soil, comp soil compaction. Sorry. Um, but the fact is that uh, this uh, kind of solution are focused on dedicated work such as uh, weed removals, uh, mechanical weed removals, or using uh, some um, uh, very accurate spraying or for uh, lawn mowing. Uh, but it's still um, uh, interesting because it permits to uh, go further in uh, the applications of, uh, of precision agricultures. Uh, since uh, there's no manpower which are uh, required for that task. But if you want to go further and investigate very new uh, production tool, we have to think about uh, much more modular robots. So there is some prototypes who are uh, develop under development, uh, close to the market uh, already, which are modular in the sense that we can uh, use it for several tasks. So um, with removal, but also you can go into vineyard and you can make several kinds of operations as you can change the implement. But if you want to uh, investigate for a new agriculture using uh, robotics, we see these first solutions, but there is, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, there is also a lot of things to do because there is uh, still some scientific and technological uh, locks. So for instance, uh, we, can, we have a lot of work to do about uh, the understandability of uh, the understanding of uh, situation around the robots. So robots has, have to uh, adapt itself uh, with respect to the different kind of environments, different kind of uh, cultures, different kind of weather. 
And so uh, that requires some new advances in uh, artificial intelligence. You have also, as you have seen, we have uh, huge machines, uh, several tons, uh, which are not operated by a human. So we have to make some progress and to impose some standards about uh, integrity, about safety of uh, this kind of uh, robots. If we uh, really want uh, to work at the plant scale, uh, we have to go further also in the how you synchronize uh, the motion of uh, an autonomous robot with, um, with an implement, an active implement. So how you take into account the fact that you are uh, touching uh, soft bodies, uh, such as plants on ground. And a very important thing is also about uh, cooperation between robots and humans as uh, one of the first um, one of the first um, possibility to introduce robots is to make them working in cooperation with humans so uh, directly um, uh, cooperating uh, in the fields but also uh, by following humans and carrying things uh, with resp to help him in uh, this kind of area. So robotics may have very important uh, benefits uh, for agriculture in terms of uh, society, the social, so social aspects, but also on economical aspects. And uh, Julie will uh, present some key figures about uh, expecting markets. Thank you. Yeah, so this is just a, a brief contextual uh, situation that uh, Lola mentioned. Um, the, um, the situation uh, pushes for the development of all of these technologies, um, particularly in Europe, uh, where, um, where there is pressure to reduce the use, use, the use of chemical inputs. Um, and uh, then there is also um, in um, the agriculture uh, have also to uh, face an, age, an aging population and lack of renewable farmers, not to mention, to mention a, shortage, a shortage of a skilled labor. So uh, investment needs to be made uh, to support the change. Um, this is some figures there, and uh, once is really relevant uh, is the, the last one uh, showing that only one percent in the all agri food tech investments has been invested in the farm robotics mechanization. So it's a uh, it's a few when uh, the market is estimated to eight billion uh, dollars uh, in this years in 2020. But uh, but we we, we see the the, 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 the change in the fields uh, today we estimate the numbers of uh, worldwide of agfield robots in operation so in the fields at four hundred and uh, and ninety two uh, but this uh, only all by uh, 60, 16 players which is few but showing that. Uh, that the, the development uh, are there and uh, we are uh, confident uh, about, uh, about it. Thank you very much, Julie. Now it's time for us to present you this fifth edition of FIRA. Uh, we are very proud to say that now FIRA has, is well positioned as the expert leading event of the agricultural robotics industry. Well, actually, we know that in the world there is no other event dedicated only on uh, agricultural robots. So this year, as we are going virtual and we will talk about it later, we expect 3,000 participants worldwide connecting during the three days uh, in regard with um, the 800 people that came last year uh, physically on our event in Toulouse, south of France. So you can see here some key figures about uh, how, how FIRA is developing uh, for this year's edition. So yes, FIRA 2020 is going virtual, 100% virtual. Uh, we all know, unfortunately, the main reason why we had to, to rethink the way we do events nowadays. So we said, okay, there is no chance that people for our international event will be able to travel all the way uh, to meet us in Toulouse in France. 
So we are going to make a real event, 100% virtual, with exhibitors, with uh, all the services, and Maya Len will present you this later. So we are going virtual to be even more international because for us at the end, this is a big opportunity. And we know that with no travel required, we will be able to create a real dedicated social media for agricultural robotics key players for this year. And next year, it's a new challenge and we want to, get, to be hybrid to say, okay, we're organizing both physical and virtual events and we want to, to grow just to help developing uh, the industry with us. Some general information about FIRA 2020. So the platform will be virtual, so obviously it will be open 24 hours a day. And to make sure that all participants from anywhere in the world can attend some live sessions and can be able to meet participants and to meet also exhibitors on their booths, we are opening the contents, the conferences, the workshops on a large opening time from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. UTC plus two hours. So it will be possible for people to attend all the, um, all the conferences in live or on demand because at the end of each session, each session will be available on demand until July 2021. So for participants, it's very interesting for them to say that they can attend for three days, but they are able to go back to the platform during six months. Regarding the pricing, um, the early bird rate is still available until the end of this month. So this is very important for you to know. Uh, we chose since the beginning of the FIRA to make it free for farmers and for producers. And also for journalists, if you want to request an accreditation, please feel free to, to send me an email. Regarding the typology of the participants, this is a, a map for you to see that FIRA is made with farmers and with robot manufacturers. They are the main um, participant types, but it's all the industry, all the key players of the industry that we need to have around the table to start collaborating and to start developing all together the, the industry. It is really important that all those uh, typologies work together to better understand how to collaborate and how to do business also together. We put huge efforts on our globalization strategy. And the main one, which is not an effort at the end, because we are very proud and very happy to collaborate with ambassadors from the different regions of the world. And those ambassadors are real partners. They are almost real colleagues for us as we are working every day with them. And they are very big help for us to promote FIRA directly in their own country and to promote at the end agricultural robotics in their own country. Our ambition at the end and year after year is to create a global ecosystem for agricultural robotics. So now, Maya Len, you can please uh, make a tour of this virtual platform. <laughs> yes, thank you, Gwendolyn. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, Okay, welcome at FIRA virtual, uh, virtual forum here in our, the, the lobby of our Congress Center. So about the virtual platform, we have following different demo and the white sourcing, decided to work with this American company for different reason. First, we wanted a platform that would offer all services contained in the FIRA and not offer a degraded or low version of the event. We wanted to keep the high quality, the high level of quality. We also wanted to work with a platform that guarantee safety, reliability, ergonomics, and which is user-friendly and easy accessible from, uh, on every, every device. Um, and then we also wanted to have, of course, a real tool between attendees and partner, because at FIRA, the collaboration and the B2B meeting are very important. The question could be how in physical we can show robot. 
Uh, and that is why we, we, we chose to, to work with this platform. And we also, it was also the opportunity for us to create new content and a new way to show, uh, to show the robot in FIRA. So you are in the main uh, lobby, you enter in our Congress Center. And of course in FIRA, we have the first part of FIRA, it's all about content. So we will have access to three different conference rooms, in which room you will have a, a full program during the three days available in live with Q &A, uh, Q, live Q&A. And of course, all content will be available directly on demand until July uh, next year. So the content will be very important. Then, of course, as I said, FIRA is about networking and B2B meeting. So here, well, I'm alone for the moment, but you will have access to all attendees connecting in the same time. And here attendees connecting in the same room as you. And it will be possible to, uh, to start one-to-one -one, uh, one -one connection or group, uh, small group chat chat with direct translation though so they will will have uh, the language translation available for the for the chat but we will also have the networking lounge in the networking lounge attendees will have the possibility to launch a group discussion thematic discussion to exchange business card to start group conversation or guided or guide discussion so here is the networking lounge um, of course, one thing very important is to show robots and to show robots and also our partner, we have two ways. First, the robot gallery in which you will have access to all direct, the real, you will have the direct link to the robots manufacturer partners at FIRA. And of course, one thing very important, it's the exhibit hall. And the exhibit hall, it's not a resource center for our partner. It's a real exhibition hall with private uh, booth and the booth it's both a resource library with all content from our partner that you can put on your briefcase or you can share on by email or social network but it's also a booth where you will have the possibility to start a direct chat with the representative of the booth uh, to schedule meeting and also to ask for a visio meeting there is the visio option in the booth so here it's a quick overview of, uh, of our platform. Of course, uh, you will have the full access when you will, uh, you will attend FIRA in December. This is for the presentation, the short presentation of the virtual platform. Let's go back uh, to the presentation. Yes, so about uh, to go further about the content of this edition. Of course, you will have all details in the press kit and in, on our website. But regarding the particular context, we build a full program trying to understand how can agricultural robotics provide an appropriate and alternative response without, also, of course, forgetting the unusual social, economic, and environmental, environmental context. Um, so, in the next uh, slide, in any case, yes, so in any case, we see that this virtual edition, it's a real opportunity for us to gather even more robot manufacturer from all over the world. And with all this manufacturer, we will have different format and different action with them to promote uh, the different uh, the functionality of robot and the agricultural robotics so you will have and it's a new in exclusivity for this edition you will have demos in in real condition and you will also have thematic workshop uh, with the presentation of functionality of different robots from all over the world so well, it's the same that for the robot manufacturer, but you will see that this edition is also the opportunity to get vision and to share expertise of various key players of the industry coming from all over the world. So, okay, we only have two women representing in, the, in our panelists and it's uh, our ambition for the next edition to have 50-50 uh, as speaker. Uh, we will work on it. <laughs> and um, yes, 
in the next year. Uh, as I said, all the, um, the, the details are available on our website, but you can see uh, the, the program, the overview of the three day of FIRA. And as we, we the, this year, we have to deal with a different time zone. Uh, so we did the choice to mix all our format and not to have dedicated day by topics. So it means that all attendees will have the possibility to follow, uh, to follow live session and then to have access to uh, the session on, on demand. So it was very important for us to build a program that fits with all the time zone from all over the world. Yes, and uh, in parallel of this uh, program, uh, the FIRA will welcome the second uh, scientific workshop organized by uh, Rob Agui uh, in Rai and uh, the French National Group on uh, Robotics. Uh, the idea is to take the opportunity of uh, the forum uh, to bring people together to think about a solution in order to uh, go further, to go beyond uh, the scientific and technological uh, locks we have identified. Uh, previously uh, and trying to uh, make robots uh, much more uh, efficient, powerful in order to help uh, <coughs> uh, agriculture and uh, farmers uh, to benefit from this new technology. So um, we will investigate uh, three main topics uh, which are uh, uh, separated in the three sessions, uh, one for each day. The first one will be on uh, how uh, robots can make decisions uh, with respect to uh, varying, varying environments uh, and um, to uh, help uh, robots um, move accurately and safely uh, in agricultural environments. The second will be focused on human-robot interactions in order to permit people to uh, work with robots and to uh, supervise robots <coughs> and um, have a good cooperation with them. And the third one will be about the uh, automation of uh, implement and coordination between robots, 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 and uh, implements. So uh, it's a scientific workshop. So uh, there will be proceedings uh, which will be uh, edited. Um, and uh, there is a call for papers, and you are welcome <coughs> to uh, submit a one page abstract by the 31st of uh, October at the following address. But again, you will have all the details into the, um, uh, on the website and in the communication kit you will uh, have just after. Uh, so do not hesitate to uh, uh, broadcast uh, this news and uh, <coughs> contribute to make uh, this uh, workshop a success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roland. So um, now you can have a quick overview of uh, our major partners. And talking about partners, we are very happy and proud to welcome uh, two of our major partners. So first of all, please welcome Anouk Lefebvre, who is uh, the Communication Director of Nayo Technologies. Thanks, Gwendolyn. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for, for the invitation to this conference. So we are very proud to, 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 to see that the, the FIRA is going well and, uh, and this edition is going to be, to be great. So just for the one who don't know yet NIO Technology, I will make a short introduction uh, to remind that the company was created in 2011 by two robotics engineers, so Gaëtan Sevrac and Emric Bartels. Um, at SNAIO, we want you to realize uh, sustainable practices and support healthier food for everyone. So that's really important. And we think robotics uh, is a perfect way to, to feed humanity in the next year with a sustainable uh, agriculture. Um, so um, with our robots now, we will, um, I, I will underline the, the milestone of the year, uh, even if the year is not uh, over, but uh, um, so for NAIO this year in March, we have opened what we call the a NAIO Center, uh, a NAIO Center in uh, California in Salinas, and another one in the center of France in Poitiers. Uh, these uh, two NAIO centers are um, places where we have colleagues working there. They are making some demos, some tests, and it's an opportunity for us to be uh, closer to our uh, 
uh, our customers and uh, our partner. Uh, so that uh, was a big step for us uh, at the beginning of, uh, of the year, the spring. And uh, then another important uh, major step is for uh, OZ. OZ was the first robot developed by uh, Mayo Technologies. And uh, this year he has, um, he gets an improvement in terms of uh, guidance. So the GPS RTK has been implemented on the robot and the precision is really great. And um, after this summer, we already get a lot of great returns from our users, our farmers. Uh, so we are looking forward to be at the end of this year to really make um, the, um, the overview, the feedbacks, to gather all the feedbacks and see that um, the 120 O's already working uh, abroad, not only in France, but at the international, are, are pretty working well. Another news concerning NAIO, uh, in the last two months, we have announced a partnership with one major company called Stroop, uh, specialized in, um, um, how we call that, sorry, uh, sh sugar beets. And uh, it's also important to show that NAIO, we do not have only O's, Ted, and Tino, but we are also uh, asked for, for, from other companies to uh, put our expertise, uh, to share our expertise in robotics to develop uh, other kind of robots for different type of um, crops and uh, different uh, agriculture. And finally, uh, one important news uh, that uh, I'm happy to share with you today in exclusivity because we haven't yet shared the, the press release is that we are launching a new version of our robot TED. TED is our robot dedicated to vineyards for, for wine growers. And uh, thanks to the, the 20 uh, wine growers, approximately, we have worked uh, during the last two years, we have been able to, to develop this new version. And that's a major step for, for the company. And we're really happy to, uh, to present uh, this robot. And uh, I'm sure you will, you will see it um, during the, the FIRA uh, with uh, some, some video and, and some information about it. Uh, so, um, Mayellen will share with you the, the press release in the, in the press kit and you can find some other information regarding the technical improvement uh, of the robot. I will not go further into details, but do not hesitate to, to contact me if you want some, some more information. But uh, yeah, that's a, a great news to share with you today. So thanks again for, for this, uh, this few minutes and uh, I'm looking forward to, to take part with uh, all the team at Mayo to this uh, digital version of, of the FIRA. Thank you very much, Anouk. Uh, now it's time for um, another major partner of FIRA to, to talk. So please welcome Alex Stapleton from Barta. Thanks, Gwendolyn. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, as mentioned, my name is Alex Stapleton. I'm a European Business Development Manager at uh, Varta Storage for Varta AG. Uh, and just a short introduction to the company. Varta is uh, a battery company in the south of Germany based out of Elwangen. We're actually more than 130 years old, so about as old as a battery company can really be. And we do uh, really a wide range of, of different uh, technologies from very small hearing aid batteries and uh, lithium coin cells up to larger packs for uh, equipment, uh, similar like we talked about today. Um, so why are we here? Well, I think we recognize that um, tomorrow's agriculture has a, a need to be more sustainable, uh, more accurate with more precision and uh, be provided with less effort than uh, ever before. And um, we actually you know, attended uh, the FIRHA last year for the first time. And I think we were very quick to recognize that these challenges and more are being uh, addressed by uh, the agri-robotics market uh, and a lot of exciting uh, young, fresh ideas and companies that are, that are growing extremely quickly. And I think it's fair to say that in our company, we have uh, uh, experience with uh, some applications, not directly the same, but similar like uh, forklift trucks, AGVs, um, uh, ride on lawn mowers, and uh, similar types of equipment that need sometimes these uh, higher voltages and uh, more power than uh, a typical handheld application. And so it's our target now uh, within our company to really 
uh, work together with partners and drive forward in this uh, market to become really number one in, in battery supply for, uh, for this kind of market uh, over the next uh, five or six years. So how do we see uh, our way to achieving this? Well, I think it's important we recognize uh, that it is a, a fast growing uh, young market and um, we have a, a lot of business and a lot of experience making normally uh, customized products. But uh, for this particular range, uh, we made a lot of work and investment to produce uh, some standard products, what we call application specific batteries um, that allow uh, customers basically to build modular batteries. That's the, that's the important thing, they're modular so that you can build up from uh, an, a small device or a small robot, for example, up to something much larger. And we have uh, two main products in this area. Uh, one we call Easy Blade and one we call Easy Block. And um, they run at 24 volts or 48 volts. And you can build these together into larger packs to create something up to about 40 kilowatt hours. So. It gives a lot of flexibility to a designer and it gives uh, instant access for somebody who wants to have just a few pieces. Um, and then as they grow and as potentially we grow together, then customization can be something for uh, the future for everybody. I think um, lithium iron has big advantages uh, compared to, for example, lead acid. So you see, of course, uh, uh, more energy in the same space, so more power and more runtime. Uh, a longer service life in general, and uh, zero maintenance for the user as well, which is, uh, I think, critical for this type of market. The idea being that you want to be able to really fit and forget that product. And then uh, as we grow and move forward and learn, I think we want to develop this range uh, and also add some of our experience in uh, energy storage systems so, uh, for solar energy so that we can have clean, sustainable uh, solar powered charging systems uh, running in the farm and running in the field um, so that the, the robots can do their work, go home to the charging station and then carry on working without uh, any uh, necessary human interference or at least minimal, uh, minimal effort on that side. And then I think the final piece for the puzzle uh, that we will add uh, will be uh, with some of our charging partners to add wireless charging capabilities so that um, contact is not so important. Of course, uh, the outdoors is a difficult environment, uh, both for the, for the device and also for a battery as well. So this is something that I think uh, we want to add in the future. So um, we're very excited to be here. We're very happy with what's, uh, what, how the FIRA was performing last year. And uh, it's amazing to us how quickly everything grows. And uh, we're really looking forward as well to be involved this year in 2020. So thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. So I think we, we kept the right time. So now it's time for your, your questions and we try to answer our best. Emma, are there some questions? Uh, yes, so what will be the price of TED? Ah, that's for Nile Technologies then. Yes, so right. Uh, so, uh, we, so far, we, I don't have the approximative prices, but uh, I can, if the person can send me an email tomorrow morning, uh, we'll, we will publish the, the price. So uh, if you want the exact price, uh, if you, you don't, it will be uh, around 20K. But. Um, I have a question uh, for uh, Alex from Barta, um, because we see that with the, our different exchange with our partner and speaker that the agricultural robotic industry is developing with a lot of collaboration and co-construction from between robotic manufacturer and farmer or with supplier, etc. So how, how is collaboration for for, for Vata and for the development of your new product. Uh, thanks, Maya Yanya. Yeah. We, uh, we definitely rely on collaboration. Uh, uh, in fact, without collaboration, we'd really struggle to, to be successful um, in really any of the markets we work in because um, we obviously have a, a lot of expertise in batteries, but uh, we really uh, apply that to a lot of markets uh, across the whole company. So we work in, uh, I mentioned, you know, hearing aid, uh, wireless headsets, uh, medical devices, pumps, 
uh, things for the warehouse and everything else. So um, we will never know everything that we need to know about the, the products, the challenges that the customers face. And so if we want to make a successful uh, new product, especially uh, really, especially something standardized, then we have to uh, find partners who can really give us that feedback, uh, tell us what they think about our ideas, uh, and tell us when we have to change our ideas as well, you know? So um, we do that really with a process of going into the market and looking for um, people who want to, to, to work with us and have a need. And in general, um, we're very lucky, uh, especially in Europe, I would say we're very lucky that uh, the brand name is quite well known. So uh, usually with a little bit of effort, we find a few people who are willing to uh, help us on that side, you know. Okay, thank you. Any uh, other question? Please feel free to, um, to write down on your chat or QR. Well, yeah. there is another one. Any figures for total addressable market for robotic systems and for agricultural applications? This um, would be, I guess, a <coughs> question more for Julie. Yeah, the estimate market is uh, in 2020 this year, it's uh, about $8 million. And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's, 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 it's in a presentation and, uh, and it's uh, in its estimate to grow um, more than $20 billion uh, in the next five years. But it's uh, it's 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 new it's 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 new market. Yeah, and just to to add information, um, we we had a discussion with uh, with uh, Axema, which is the major French syndicate, about which country in the world are are. Um, how are in development for a good de development uh, market for ro agricultural robotics and we talk about uh, for the market well the us and canada and brazil and mexico in mexico uh, for the americas and then in uh, and then after of course china india japan and uh, and uh, a large part of israel too um, so there is different country and that is why we, we target this country to find ambassador to have uh, to have key players in this uh, in these key countries for the development of agricultural robotics. What? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, in addition, I was just sharing some figures uh, from us today. You can uh, access uh, for free by uh, Tractica, which has been uh, done quite. Uh, uh, it's quite old, but it has been um, uh, updated. So you can find on this link. I can put it on the on the um, chat. Uh, you will have some details about uh, uh, future of agricultural robotics, which is uh, uh, what is expected. Okay, thank you very much. I think Peter Hill is uh, holding hand. Can we allow the... We have a second question of, uh, of Dan and Peter, would you like to, to talk or we can switch on the microphone or you can write your question in the Q&A section. Uh, the question, well, just the next question is, what is the low hanging fruit from agricultural robots? What comes first as a market, fertilization, pest control, picking, analytics, etc. Yeah, um, maybe I can start to answer to that. Um, the, um, the first uh, robotic on, on the field are more for um, weeding and uh, fertilizations. It's uh, regarding the picking, it's uh, really complicated because uh, it's need a lot of um, uh, analytics and artificial intelligence and uh, regarding the arboriculture uh, it's not um, the farmer are uh, really cautious with technology because they can't make any mistake so um, 
for the moment, uh, I, I would say that the, the picking part, it's, it's a more uh, uh, delicate uh, area for, for the sector. Thank you. Uh, still have maybe for Peter. Here, I think Peter, you Hello. can. Talk. Yep. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ah, great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I bet you all have lots of experience of these online things, but I'm quite new to this. So apologies if my settings are wrong, but uh, yeah, I, I presume you can't see me though. Can you only hear me? No, we me? can't. Oh, you can? We oh, can't. Ah, oh, you can't. Right. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, I just uh, noticed in the list of participants that there are no um, robotics companies from the UK participating um i'm sure you must have approached them yeah yeah of course we are in touch yeah. we are in touch with small robot company from the uk uh well for the moment they decided not to to be partner of fira to present robo etc but for sure we are a validate a participation as speaker in uh, one of our thematic uh, thematic workshop um, yes yeah, we, um, of course, well, we have the full list of every manufacturer in every, in every country, but uh, for the moment, uh, no one wanted to, uh, to, to, to be present. Maybe we will have the one called ABC, uh, which is... Uh, for bees, right? A bees, yeah? That's for bees. A, B, C with the H at the beginning, right? Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. Uh, they are on funding, so with the Robo Crop Oper. So it's depending the partnership, depending of the, of course, of the of the funding. But um, two, three years ago, we we well during two years we worked with uh, Harper Adams University from UK. Uh, I am also have um, waiting for return of the Fieldwork Robotics. And we will probably have, uh, for sure, I think, have a, a, uh, a time of a time slot with crop performance from the UK. So we are in touch with different actors from from the UK. Well, it's under validation for the moment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I thought I thought thank that was you. probably the case. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. We are working with your market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we are sure through your article, they will be very interesting in coming with Pera. <laughs> Well done, Gwendolyn. That was very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is there any? Oh, there are some other questions, right? Yeah. Emma, uh, Emma, your microphone. Sorry. What are the challenges in terms of EU re regulation regarding agricultural robots? Hmm, this is a question for Roland, no? <laughs> More or less. Uh, it's a very interesting question because uh, for the moment, uh, you are allowed to uh, make robot works in your field, but you are not allowed to make your robot works uh, in, uh, on the road, uh, even on, uh, on some ways. Uh, so if you want to go from uh, one field to another field, uh, you have to put uh, the robots uh, <laughs> to handle the robots and uh, to uh, go to the other field and uh, it's very huge and um, we need to go further and uh, to allow robots uh, to cross the street or something like that. But uh, in order to do that, uh, there is some standards uh, which are uh, uh, under study regarding uh, height autonomous um, agricultural machine. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, uh, only focused on obstacle detection in order to avoid that uh, uh, robots uh, injuries uh, people. But we have to go uh, much further in order to allow the possibility for the robot to go from the farm, to go on, um, on the way, on the roads, on the streets, uh, in order to reach uh, fields. Uh, but uh, there is uh, still some uh, technological and maybe uh, 
scientific issues too. So this is typical, uh, typically um, a problem which will be uh, investigated during the uh, International Forum of Agricultural Robots uh, in uh, December. So we have to uh, discuss about this challenge because it's not uh, totally solved. And uh, that's why we organize such uh, forums and uh, it's uh, well um, the best place for this kind of discussion. Yeah, exactly. And I can say that uh, totally we start talking about uh, regulation and standardization last year at FIRA with the European Commission, with CIMA, with AEM. And this year, of course, we need to talk about it again. So we will have a round table called uh, tra uh, agricultural um, farming without tractor driver. Is that really possible? And we will answer this question by two ways. The first way is that legally and in terms of responsibility and technically possible. And then the second part of this uh, question tag will be, is that really possible in terms of organization, etc.? And I can see a second question uh, in the Q&A session about the different, the development of agricultural robotics. And it's a very good question because we will answer during another roundtable of FIRA because we see that agricultural robotics is developing in different, in different way. We have startup, we have a project, public project research, we have private project research, we have major industry uh, who, are, uh, who are working with startup, we have a uh, major industry creating their own robots such as Kuhn with Aura, such as Raven industry with dot, uh, with dot technology, etc., etc. So we will have a dedicated roundtable to talk about this model of development. And also we will have the second part of this roundtable about the business model of agricultural robotics, which business model are existing. So um, we won't give you the answer now, but you will have to uh, to to follow the the roundtable during FIRA in December. But yes, it's a it's a very good question. Uh, there is another one. <clears throat> Into oh, there is a um, how uh, how robots are being developed mainly outside the traditional manufacturers of agricultural machinery. Why this scenario? Yeah, is this one for the round table? Mm -mm. And then another question. And there is a significant cooperation with traditional manufacturer and with institution like AF. Robotics are running as like a separate sector for ag machinery. I oh, oh. sorry. Hold on. Uh, uh, res Resolu. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I made it. <laughs> made it yeah. I make this question in the context of swamps operation. Tractor and well. So, Roland? Roland? <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, uh, there is actually um, uh, groups in AEF uh, talking about uh, agricultural robots. So it's a raising question. And now there is some representative in AEF about uh, agricultural robots. Uh, not only for uh, safety, but also for uh, uh, the problem of uh, cooperation between robots from uh, one uh, brand uh, between robots uh, from another brand. So interoperability in robotics is very important. And there is some, uh, some special groups uh, who are working in, on these topics. Sorry for having uh, switch uh, <laughs> the questions <laughs> to uh, That's okay. Okay, okay, okay. But it's all, all this question we want to update <coughs> update during uh, during FIRA and FIRA is now positioned as an expert leader event and we want every here to uh, to update the industry on the latest news of course about normalization standardization um, and market and market of course other question no I guess if that's okay for you. In any case, if you have any other question uh, for the organization of FIRA or from any other person uh, talking today, please feel free to send me an email and I will uh, give you the right contact to the right person to, for you to, to have the right answer. So um, do not hesitate. 
Then uh, I will send you the full press kit directly after the, this session. Uh, this will include all the information you require and also uh, all the press releases of uh, our partners, uh, such as Nayo Technologies and Varta, who, who are including uh, in this press kit. Uh, last but not least, please also send me an email if you require an accreditation for free access to FIRA 2020. Oh, there is a, a last question, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but yes, I just answered this uh, this question. Will you provide ag journalists some documentation about the ag robotic sector? So you will find in the press kit uh, some key figures. So if this is not enough, of course, we can uh, update and uh, give you more details. So please do not hesitate to ask us. And you will find maybe even more information through all the sources we mentioned. So thank you very much to everyone. I hope this uh, conference was helpful for you. Uh, it was a, a great pleasure for us in any case. And we are delighting to welcome you at FIRA 2020 during those three days, December from eight to 10. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.